Hi and welcome to my C Shop Web Driver video series. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off and have a more detailed look at using NUnit to run our web driver tests. So to quickly recap, we wrote two tests, one which was just a proof of test, uh, a sample test, and the second was an actual web driver test where we navigated to our test room application using Firefox and then asserted that the URL contained web app and, and that was it, nothing more complicated than that really. Uh, we also looked at using NUnit as an external IDE to run our tests. So the first thing we should probably do is just make sure that our test still works and that nothing has changed. So this would be effectively a foundation to begin from. So I'm just going to go and hit the run button and just make sure both tests pass. Okay, fantastic. So it looks like both tests passed. So the purpose of this video will be to give you a little bit more information on using a couple of clever methods that NUnit provides us with to better help manage our tests. So the first thing I actually want to do is show you that you have the ability to run very specific tests without having to run the whole suit in this NUnit GUI. So for instance, if I click on web driver test and hit the run button, it will run all the tests under this particular name. So in this case, there are two sample test and sample web driver test. If I were to click on say web driver framework, it will run everything under the hierarchy that falls under web driver framework. So that means we have the ability to run very specific tests. So for instance, if I select sample test and hit run, it just runs sample test. And we can see that it's only run sample test because firstly, it only says it passed one, failed zero, error zero, uh, and so on. So that's proof that only one test run. It also says here how many test cases it ran. This is also indicated by the fact that this is grayed out. Something else that we tend to do when we write test is the ability to ignore a test. Now, why is it important to ignore a test or why do you need to ignore a test? Sometimes we ignore a test usually because the value of the test has become degraded over time. So it makes little sense to run it anymore. For instance, we could have other tests which make the current test almost redundant. But at the same time, we don't want to delete the test on the grounds that we may need it one day. And it is something someone wrote. So there's probably no value in deleting it either. So the one thing you can do is mark it as ignore. And what ignore will do is when it runs, say a test suit or a collection of tests, if that test fall inside that test, it ignores the test. So to ignore a test, all you do is you go into the test method. And where we see here, where we have the ability to add attributes, we can add in an ignore attribute. What this will do now is this couple of attributes is basically saying this method is a test, but it is also an ignored test. So just to test our theory, we're gonna save, rebuild the project. We're gonna open up our NUnit GUI interface. We're gonna select web driver test sample, which means it should run both of these tests and hit run. And now if you look, we can see that it had a total of two test cases, but it ignored one. And we can see that this ignore is indicated with a question mark. So this is how you could ignore a test, assuming you need to ignore a test. Now, another important concept of writing a test is to have the data inside the test more relevant to the test and to reduce any unnecessary noise inside the test. So in our web driver test, if you have a look, what we're doing is we are basically saying that this is a sample web driver test. So at the moment, everything inside this test is basically code that we are using to get our head around how to write tests. But ideally, when we start writing tests, which actually mean something to us, 
tests which bring us value. We need to reduce as much noise as possible inside the test. This is for two reasons. The first is to reduce unnecessary noise and the second is to have only relevant lines of code inside your test which actually contribute towards the outcome of the test. So like I said in this instance the name of the test is slightly misleading and really doesn't give us anything. So let's change the name of the test to something that means something to us. So let's just say should check application URL. So if you were to say remove this line of code outside the test, because what this line of code does is it simply creates an instance of Firefox and remove this line of code, because what this line does is that it simply closes the instance of driver. In our test, what we are left with is basically these two lines of code, which are simply navigating to the app and then checking the URL. So uh, this test is now much, much more code friendly in that it now tells us exactly what the test is doing and also reflects what the name of the test is. It doesn't try and go over the top and the test itself doesn't try and handle responsibility of other actions that it really shouldn't. All the test does is what it is meant to do. And in this case, all that it is doing is checking the URL. So this now leaves us with the question, what do we do with these two lines of code? Where do we put them? How do we fit them into this test class in that it is more relevant and matches to the nature of writing tests? Well, one thing we can do is we can write these tests inside, say, some kind of test method that we can call inside of our test. So let's just say something like public uh, void setup. And let's just move this outside so that our other tests have access to this. And public void teardown. So what is this setup method and what is this teardown method? The purpose of the setup method is to basically, in this case, have some way of setting up our driver so that it doesn't have to happen inside the test. The advantage of doing this approach is that if we have, say, multiple tests, so in this case, we actually have two tests. We can just call this method inside these tests without having to write this line of code multiple times. So this helps us on two fronts. First, it helps us reduce noise inside the test and it also helps us repeating the same line of code inside multiple tests. The same approach is taken with this teardown method, which is basically a method that we say plan on running after a test so that it can do some cleanup. So if we were to say run this test, we can say something like this. So when this test now runs, it will basically call this setup method, which is going to create a driver for us. It will then do the test, and then it will run this teardown method, which will basically go ahead and close the driver. But before we go ahead, there is a slightly flawed approach to this, and that is we are still doing stuff inside this test, which is not necessary or should not be part of this test. So Although this makes it a little bit more cleaner, this actually doesn't solve our original issue, which is we're trying to use this code in our test, but at the same time, we want to reduce noise in, in our test and make the code inside our test much more relevant to the test. So how can we do this? Well, luckily, NUnit, and like many other testing frameworks, where we have this concept of tagging a test with an attribute, we have the ability to tag other methods with other attributes, which have distinct purposes. And unit provides us with this setup tag. Uh, 
or setup attribute. And what this attribute in this case does is it marks this method with this setup attribute, but it also says, or rather the purpose of this is that this method would run before each and every test case in your test class. So what will happen here is it will basically run this method before running this test, before running this test, and it will run each time for any given number of tests in your test class. Similarly, we can mark this teardown method with the teardown attribute. And what this will now do is it will now run this teardown test after a test has executed. So just to prove our point, let's write some console writes. Let's save, rebuild the project, and let's use nUnit to run our tests again. So we're going to select WebDriver test sample and hit run. Okay, so if you select the text output, we can select a test. We can see that it has actually printed out the method that it ran. So in our first case, all it did was it just printed out all the console write lines. So we don't really need to worry about this. But for our second test, we can see that it first ran the setup method, followed by the test case, followed by the teardown method. So if we go ahead and remove this ignore and save, rebuild the project and run again in any unit. We can now see that when it ran the sample test, it first ran the setup method. So it opened up an empty Firefox browser. It then ran test case one. In our test, there really isn't any web driver stuff. It's just doing some, some number equivalence check. And then it ran the teardown method. And then for our second test, it ran the setup method again, followed by the test case, and then closed the browser down again. So by writing this setup method and this teardown method, what have we actually achieved? Well, for starters, we've reduced a lot of noise in our test. So if we now get rid of these console lines, we can see that the code inside the test is now much more relevant to the test. We now have the ability to write multiple tests without having to worry about handling the driver because this is now done in other dedicated methods inside the same class and going forward we have now the ability to better manage our test code so in this video we've learned a little bit more about nUnit uh, in that we have the ability to ignore a test but also more importantly we have the ability to better manage our code and make our test give us more value and make them more manageable in the long run and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.